Hey guys, Shane here with Hangar 8 Media. Today we're going to talk about preheating your airplane engine. Why and how. So if you want to learn more, stick with us and I'll show you why and how. So you wake up and it's 30 degrees or colder and you want to go fly your airplane. You've got a few options. Um, you can take the risk of damaging your airplane, take the risk of potentially losing an engine in flight, or you can preheat your engine. And there's several different ways of doing this. Now, not all of us have the availability of being in a warmer climate. So if you don't want to preheat your engine, but you do want to fly, uh, maybe move to South Florida but not all of us can live in some tropical paradise or in a warmer environment. Uh, we're in Georgia, north of Atlanta, and it does get in freezing temperatures here. And my first airplane, I didn't know a whole lot about it. Uh, the POH was very small, didn't go into preheating, but one morning everybody was gonna go fly. They'd all preheated their airplanes in their hangars. I didn't have the availability of having a hangar. Uh, I went to go fire up Lulu and my mechanic came by and said, what do you think you're doing? Okay, so he gave me a lesson in preheating. He said, you are not gonna fly this airplane. Well, your oil can get very thick when it gets cold, right? So if you're firing this engine up while it's cold, it can take a few minutes for the oil to warm up so that it can flow through the engine properly and lubricate the engine, which reduces wear. If you fire the engine up cold, it can be compared to putting 500 hours of time on your engine, which is very detrimental, very costly. Now, if you're up north uh, in the northern USA or in Canada, there are heated hangars. Now, they do cost more. If you don't have that luxury again, then you gotta preheat your engine. I always refer to your POH or your airplane's operating handbook and also refer to the engine manufacturer, whether it be Lycoming or Continental, and see what they have to say about preheating. So as I was driving out here this morning, I've got an email from pilotworkshops.com and it was interesting because the title was, what are the dangers of taking off with a cold engine? Well, that sort of ties into preheating your engine. So if we look at their tips that they have on here, they're talking about warming an engine up, how much warm up is required for an aircraft engine and what are the dangers of taking off with a cold engine? Well, we don't, really want to take off with a cold engine, we're, uh, we're more concerned about damaging the engine with cold oil in the engine is the reason why we're preheating the engine. But yes, there's so many dangers outside of just that, trying to take off with a cold engine. Um, and what they mentioned on here is, is, the question is, is the dangers of taking off with a cold engine, cylinder head temperatures is an issue. So setting takeoff power causes a rapid buildup of engine heat. If the cylinders are not yet warm, this rapid temperature can cause cylinder damage. And you could also have uh, engine lockups on takeoff, um, which can be fatal. You can, it also discusses that the oil inside the oil cooler can congeal and it actually block the uh, oil flow from the engine. So there's all kinds of harmful things that can happen if you don't preheat your engine and also don't let the engine warm up correctly and come up to proper temperatures before taking off. So these are a lot of things you need to keep in mind when flying an airplane in colder temperatures. Like I said, we're here in Georgia. Um, there's a couple of months out of the year, it'll get cold, it'll get down below 30s. And if it's down below the 30s, then we'll use some type of preheat and preheat the engine. Well, Archie here actually lived most of his life in Alaska. So thankfully, there's already a preheater on Archie and I'll show you what it is. Now the preheater on Archie is just a pan heater and it goes on the bottom of the oil pan. So if we wanna preheat, we simply plug in the outlet and we let our oil pan warm up. Now this might take a few hours, no big deal. Uh, and there's ways around that. You can put it on a timer, you can put it on some type of control device. Now we will have some videos on that in the future. When we look at the oil pan preheater, it's hard to tell in the engine. I've got a GoPro down in there, but we can see that it's basically glued to the bottom of the oil pan right here. Now it comes up through an electrical line. This electrical line has plenty of slack if we need to relocate it, 
but what the installer did was just install it right here so you can access it through the door for the uh, oil dipstick. So basically we just plug it in and like I said it takes a few hours and it'll warm up the bottom of the oil pan. We're now warming up the oil pan. Now there's another way to preheat your engine. A lot of the guys here all had small electric heaters and so when I've asked several mechanics their opinion which is better now this is just an opinion but they said that the electric heater is better because it warms everything around the engine up everything inside of the cowling now if we're just using the oil pan heater it's simply only warming up the bottom of the engine and warming up the oil now that is sufficient but we always look at what's best we're going to go with the electric heater so today we're going to actually build an electric heater that'll fit on Archie and preheat our engine so I stopped at the big box shop, grabbed us an electric heater, and uh, let's unbox it and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, so you saw that I went to the local big box shop and got ourselves a electrical heater. And we also got some flexible duct, and this is, uh, can be used for dryer vents and whatnot. And I've got a piece of, this is actually a dryer vent um, that goes on the ex exterior of the house. I had to cut the rivets out to get the flapper off of it, but this worked best to uh, mount up to our heater. And then I've got another fitting here that I've formed a little bit, and we're gonna fit this around the exhaust pipes on Archie. Something else I did was install a little thermometer here, and this is, you can find these at uh, hardware stores, or um, they can be used on grills or whatnot, but this just tells us what the temperature is of the air flowing through here. So it gives us an idea if we're gonna melt anything inside the uh, engine cowling or not. So let's go ahead and assemble this all. Heater is mounted to a piece of wood. That way it can't fall over and accidentally turn off or cause some type of harm. We've got our flexible tubing here. Now what we've done in the past is just sort of crimp this and shove it around the exhaust pipe but I'm gonna try a new fitting today that I've molded that'll fit the exhaust on Archie. Our heater is complete. We're gonna go put it on the uh, other side of Archie and fit it on and I'll show you what it looks like. Got our heater, and it's attached to our piece of wood so it cannot fall over, so it's nice, safe, secure. We've got our flexible duct, and it goes up to our new fitting here that goes inside the bottom cowling and around the exhaust of Archie. And I've got a nice little thermometer here that's telling us it's right at 100 degrees. We've got it set on low. So 100 degrees, run a couple of hours, and it should be able to warm everything up inside. Now, typically I'll throw a uh, blanket on top of the cowling so it'll retain the heat so it doesn't escape back out uh, very quickly. Just sort of insulate the top of it. So what we do is we usually just plug one of these up for two or three hours and with our environment here in Georgia, uh, two or three hours is sufficient to preheat the engine. We'll let the uh, heater do that while we just uh, do some other stuff around here at the hangar and we'll come back and should be warm enough to be ready to fly. So I want to thank everybody for watching our video on preheating the engine. If you've got any questions or comments, please drop those down in the comments below. I love to see comments. And if you have any questions, uh, ask those as well. And if I don't have an answer, I'll be glad to find someone that does. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an expert. I just like shooting videos and trying to uh, educate people on airplane ownership and some of the joys of aviation. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you have a great day.